Okay. So, welcome to the kinesiology webinar on just getting started on research. Um, I'm going to X out of some things so I can see it. So you guys are seeing the screen too of the PowerPoint of the Google slide. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, with a webinar like this, it's a little bit hard because, you know, some people ask to kind of see everything and some people, I think, felt like they wanted to go a little bit more in depth and we really only have 20 minutes. So just to make sure we're on the same page, I'm not going to harp on it. Um, the basic searching strategies, you know, for searching in a library database and library resources versus Google and then Google Scholar, is that Google Scholar can be great. It gives you a wide range of stuff. You're searching many different databases, similar to the library catalog that we'll go over, but even beyond. And their algorithms are different and more powerful because they're Google. And so a lot of times your results you're getting with Google Scholar are different than you'll get with library catalogs, which can be good. And it's also super easy to use. So the negatives of that are that there's a lack of area, um, subject area filters. So you don't have as many filters as you do with library databases, which we'll go over. Um, it's full text limited, um, and we can turn on a way to connect you and do full text, which we will go over. But um, you have limited um, filters in terms of um, that kind of stuff. So library databases are databases, academic databases that the library slash UNCG pays money for. So we are, um, so they are more specialized in terms of academic disciplines. So for example, today we are going to go over sports discus, which is one of the largest sports exercise and um, sports medicine databases. But um, saying that, and it has content organized by experts, you can limit your searches better than Google Scholar, and it's more clear whether an article is peer-reviewed or not. Um, so it's a little bit more clear what you're looking at versus Google. They're kind of asking you to look at it on your own. So the negatives of that is that it's uh, not as easy to use interface, and their navigation tools aren't as sophisticated as Google. So you kind of have to know some search connectors to use while you're searching, which we will go over. It's hard to know um, specific databases for discipline, especially something like kinesiology, where you guys are so interdisciplinary. Um, sometimes you might be looking at one database but you're missing out on what's going on in a lot of other databases. Um, so always keep that in mind. And you really need to learn how to use the limiters and search connectors for best results, which we will go over. So again, I didn't want to harp on it, but just to make sure we were on the same page, that's the main differences. It's, of course, it's okay to use Google Scholar, um, and there, we're going to go over some ways to use it if you're going to use it, but just to know that you know, library databases are different and can sometimes be a little bit better. So the search connectors that we're talking about are, I'm just going to mention briefly, are and, or, um, the asterisk, and not. So when I say this, these are typically used in library databases, something like Sports Discus or in other EBSCO databases. Um, but of course, Google, you don't need this stuff because they have algorithms to kind of figure out what you're trying to say. Databases don't have those, so you need to kind of use these. Um, a lot of times they're built in, and we'll go over that, but the and is a big one, and that is connecting ideas. So the example I have here is connecting physical education and academic achievement. So um, if you were just to put in physical education, academic achievement, it's not. It's going to look for things that have all of those words in it. So also quotation marks around phrases like physical education, academic achievement can help your search in terms of databases. Again, in Google, you could probably just throw in physical education, academic achievement, and you would get different results and maybe a broader range of results. So or would be if you wanted to expand your search using synonyms. So an example here is, you know, if you're looking for something to do with children, you could put in a lot of different synonyms for children, such as children or girls or boys, or youth, if you even go further, or adolescent. That would be like if you're only finding like three articles and you wanted to maybe expand it to show other terms as well. So the asterisk is something I don't typically talk about, but you guys are higher level students. But you can put an asterisk at the root of a word, and it will search multiple versions of that word. So the example I have here is that if you put an asterisk at the end of L-I-B-R-A-R, Libra, 
you'll be searching for the terms librarian, library, library. So anything with that root that goes before the asterisk. This can be useful with course with um, exercise. You know, you could put it at the root and then look for plurals and different forms of the word exercise, so that kind of thing. Okay. So the rest of this is going to be demoing. I'm sure you're relieved because you wouldn't want to just hear me talk about searching the whole time. So um, not many of you on the survey sent out wanted to get like a big tour of the library um, web page, but just to make sure we're all on the same page, um, I do want to show the basics of getting started on the library page because I know some of you are new to UNCG. Um, some who came said that they went here for undergrad or maybe have been here for a little bit, but just again to make sure we're all on the same page. Um, library.uncg.edu is the library homepage. And this big red box up here at the top is our catalog. So the difference between the library, searching the library catalog versus searching databases is that you can search um, the catalog pulls from all of our electronic databases and beyond. So a lot of times I'll do a search in our library catalog and search beyond um, that, um, what we maybe have. Um, okay, sorry. I just muted some people to get the feedback kind of down. Okay, so um, saying that, um, again, it depends on what you're looking for, but using, the cat, using this big red box under all searches not only our library catalog, which again pulls from a lot of our databases, but it goes beyond. So it will also search other library catalogs, and if we don't have it, it will give you the option to enter library loan an article or a book or other resources. And we'll go over interlibrary loan a little bit in this webinar. If you search this little catalog tab, you're just searching for things that UNCG libraries own, whether it's print or electronic. And then the other tabs are pretty self-explanatory. You're searching just articles, just DVDs, and just our websites. So under this you know, the search box, you can look within our databases, which that's what I was talking about in terms of different academic databases, which we'll go over that. We have a journal A to Z list, so databases are typically comprised of journals. So, for example, Sports Discus probably has, you know, up to 20 journals that it's feeding from um, that are on different aspects of sports, medicine, and exercise. But if you, again, wanted to be a little more specific and narrow down your search, you could go to the journal A to Z list and look for things that have um, maybe your expertise in there. So you can start really broad, you know, go down and look at all the different stuff that they have to do with cardio. So again, this could be useful for you guys doing dissertations and trying to, again, really look deep into your discipline. But remember that databases are pulling from journals, so you don't have to start from the journal list. Note also that this list is pulling from titles, so it wouldn't be good to put, like, physical education and academic achievement in there. That wouldn't really work the same way. Um, we also have these research guides by subject, which we do make cater towards disciplines and courses, and we have course reserves, which isn't as applicable for this. So if you go to research guides by subject, note that we do have every subject available at UNCG. I wanted to point this out for you guys because, again, you're in a very interdisciplinary um, field. So, you know, of course you have a kinesiology guide, which we'll go over, but note that we also have educational guides. You know, that would be good for the um, kin EDD students. We have nutrition, nursing, nanoscience, um, a lot of different things. So remember, um, maybe it's also good, depending on your research, depending on your track, that you can look at this other stuff as well to make sure you're not limiting yourself. But for this, let's look at the kinesiology guide. So I'm not going to go a huge detail on this webinar on how to use the library catalog because there is a video here on how to use that. There is also, of course, how to find articles, finding books, other online library resources, which include streaming, dissertations, and data management. I know a lot of you guys have had orientations with me, so again, I'm not going to harp on this, but also websites for your discipline, and also APA and AMA style, depending on your course or your you know studies or whatever you're doing. 
So this is a good place to start, and I'm showing you this because it's important to maybe bookmark this and keep this in mind, because library databases, because we pay for them, work on something called a lib proxy. So for example, it won't work when you Google a database. You know, so if you were to Google PubMed, go through PubMed, it might show you articles, but it might also show you like these articles are unavailable in full text. If you're going through the LibGuide or through the library website database page, you're connecting to our proxies, which means even if you're off campus, you're able to log in with your UNCG, UNCG username and password and then therefore get access. So that's just the important part is that if you, it's fine to use Google, but be careful when you're searching um, in Google because of those issues. It's always better to go through either this LibGuide or that library homepage that we were just on. So, um, so I know a lot of you are doing, um, are interested in Google Scholar. So I'm going to go there real fast before we get too deep into the library. But of course, here's good old Google Scholar. So let me just. So, if you are searching in Google Scholar, you can, of course, like I said, you don't really have to worry as much about those search connectors and limiters. You can just kind of type in things you're interested in. So here we can just say, um, oh, spelling is so important, fitness and academic achievement, and see what comes up. So here you can see, I do see some stuff. Sometimes it does link you straight to a PDF, which can be useful. You do have a couple of limiters over here on the left. This is what they mean, what I mean by limiters, where you could limit by date. Um, but note here, there's not really much you can do in terms of subject. That's what we're talking about, where library databases typically let you do a lot of things based on subject, languages, document type. Um, Google Scholar doesn't have that stuff. Um, also, you could start hitting around in here, and um, it will show you things, but then maybe when you try to download things, it will tell you that you don't have it or you can't um, read it. So here I can download the citation, but see, I can't get it. When I ask for it, it's going to say probably something like pay money or log in, and it's not going to be, see, this wouldn't work with your UNCG username and password. So something you can do in Google Scholar is you can go to your settings, which is under the arrow right here, or if you were at the top home page, it's over on the top right. Click on settings, go over on the left, and click on library link. So from here, um, you would need to type in the full name. Um, UNCG wouldn't work because what it's doing is it's searching all of the stuff that has this connector. And then see, here we are, University of North Carolina at Greensboro University Libraries. So click that and then push save. And so now once you've done that, you can see on the right that this same search has this option over here on the right of finding the full text at UNCG. So when you click on that, it will take you here into our catalog and it will link you to our library databases that have the full text. So if you're off campus, it might ask you for a login. I am at my house right now, so you'll see the example of a login page. Sometimes it takes a little bit, but here it is. I'm actually logged into my Google account, so I think it didn't ask you for that, but you can, here's where you get the full text. And you can download it. So that's Google Scholar. There is a um, video about this linked on your LibGuide, and I'll send it to you guys afterwards if you're interested. So if you didn't write all that down or see it, you know, you'll have it. The video just goes through that step process really easily. Um, and definitely let me know if you have any questions. But it's really useful, and like I said, I don't, I think Google Scholar is great, um, but if you're going to use it, I definitely recommend doing this so that you don't think we don't have these articles. This isn't also perfect. Um, note that if you were to go down here, you know, not everything has that full text, but remember we do have something called interlibrary loan where we can borrow things from other universities. So if you don't see all the full text stuff, this is an example of something we have a lot of full text of, let's say you find something on Google Scholar or wherever and um, you think we don't have it or you want to make sure we have it, 
An example of this is that you could go into here and um, type in the title. So I'll type in something I was looking at early. Putting quotes around something that is a title that you specifically want means that it will look just for that title. So here it is. This is the I want it. It's a chapter um, in it. But note that um, when I click on it, it doesn't say that there's any full text links. So this is where you would click on this button, request item through interlibrary loan. Um, and I think I was messing this way. So this is your login. It's the same as your UNCG login without the at uncg.edu, and it's the same password. The first, if you've never logged into it before, it will ask you some questions when you first set it up, such as your address. This is important for you to put in, if, especially if you are a distance student outside of Guilford County, because we'll also deliver books to you through the mail if you're outside of Guilford County. So keep that in mind. But note that because I went through the library catalog, it now has all the information I need. You know, you can see here it maybe missed the title, so there might be some tweaking you need to do. And then in the note field, be sure to note uh, there, there's a certain date that if it's too late, you don't want it by. And then you can submit requests. That's it. You'll get an email if they can find it or when it's available. If it's an electronic article, it typically takes um, no more than 48 hours. Sometimes it goes as quickly as 24 hours. But that's, of course, during Monday through Friday business days. Um, right now, at this moment, we are actually a little bit um, uh, we're behind with IOL, and IOL is not working nationally. It's having some issues with Ilya. Like, I was kind of surprised that I could log in right now. But um, keep that in mind. Um, that it's not working right now, but it will be working soon. So be sure to track your stuff if you um, need it at this moment, and we'll try to get it as soon as possible. So um, I know I'm, like, bordering on 17 minutes. So the next thing I'm going to do is go straight into the databases. I think we'll go a little over 20, but not too bad. So you can get to the first. The one I'm going to talk about mostly today is sports discus. Um, so you can get there through your um, kinesiology page. Again, don't Google it. Or you can get to it from the database page, S Sports Discus. So again, um, go through those avenues and not the others. But um, here is Sports Discus. So whatever way you go, it should take you to a page like this where you're seeing search options. Databases in general, um, a lot of them are going to look like this because this is an EBSCO database. A lot of times I'll be doing consultations with people. I'll ask, you know, where have you been searching? And they'll say EBSCO. And I'm like, that's so broad because EBSCO owns hundreds and hundreds of databases. But Sports Discus is geared towards, again, sports and exercise and sports medicine. It's not going to be as medical as something like PubMed, which I know probably a lot of you guys are familiar with. And we'll talk about PubMed a little bit if we have time. But notice here at the top that this is totally different than Google. It breaks it down into these search connectors that we were um, talking about earlier. So you can th use things like and and the or that we talked about, but also the not. So like that would be like if you were doing your research on adolescent boys, but not girls. And that would help you limit that kind of thing. They also call search connector Boolean phrases. So keep that in mind. You'll see that throughout databases. But note if you scroll down, you also have other limiters where you can limit by country, document type, language, publication type, and database subset. I would be careful about this when you're first searching, just kind of to see what you get, but keep it in mind. Um, so one thing, so we can just start with the stuff that we've been kind of playing with and academic achievement. We can say children or adolescents or youth. They'll give you suggestions. So I'll just take their suggestion. And we actually got 294, which might seem like a lot, but for a topic like this, that's actually pretty good. But note here on the left that they have these limiters that go, again, a little bit beyond Google Scholar. So you can, of course, do the date. So let's do 10 years. So we've popped it down to 149. But you can also limit it by, you know, like if you're not interested in magazines, if you just want academic journals. 
if you want the source, subject, publication, language, geography. So they have more things on here than, again, Google Scholar can do that. Note here they're listing a lot of the journals that they're pulling from. So again, in terms of doing dissertation research, you could pick a couple of journals. Um, yeah. Notice also you can always chat on the right. So once you find some stuff you want, you, of course, can go to the link full text um, if it's available. So if that happens, you'll be able to be taken to a page where you can download the PDF straight from the page. So here's an example of that. Note that sometimes it will say check for full text. If that's the case, you can check for full text over here. But I do want you to note that sometimes on these pages, they'll have things like print, email, site, export, and permalink. So permalink, this link at the top right here, this is called a session link. It will expire. If you save this, it won't make a difference. The permalink is what you'll need to keep it permanently. Notice it has that word lib proxy in it. That means it will ask for a login later. So here you can also check for full text, see if we have it. Here's an example of where it did say we have it in another journal. Sometimes it will say no, and in that case, that's where you would interlibrary loan it. So that's kind of the basics of searching. One thing I also wanted to note about Sports Discus, again, because you guys are so interdisciplinary, is that because it is an EBSCO database, you have this option here at the top where it says choose databases. If you click on that, you can not only search Sports Discus, but you can search Academic Search Complete. That's a very large interdisciplinary one. Like for this study where I'm looking at, you know, physical education and academic achievement, you could also, you know, do child development and adolescent study. Psych Info is a good one right here. All of them have a little description. But this one is, you know, psychology-based. So again, depending on what your study is, ERIC is a large educational one. So you can click on, you know, a couple of these to add to your search and um, see what comes up. I don't want that. And then be sure to click OK. So now it takes us back here, and we can redo the search. And see, we, we lost our limiters over here. But it will bring more results in, because now we're looking at more databases. So this can be a good way to kind of go beyond the library catalog, where you're, again, being a little bit more specific to your discipline, but you're not being so specific that um, you're limiting yourself. So that is, now we're at 23 minutes. So let's take a breath and stop for a second. So do you guys have any questions about that stuff? And I can unmute you if you want um, to say anything, or you can chat in if you want to be unmuted. All right, so do you guys, are you guys familiar with PubMed? Do you want me to talk a little bit about PubMed, or would you rather just say this is like enough for now? I, Sam, I have a, yeah, this is Scott, I have yeah. a sometimes uh, difficulty with some of the mesh terms, I guess, with PubMed, I, you know, and uh, uh, sometimes that's where I have problems, but I know there's lots of tutorials on PubMed, which I never seem to have time to really yeah. to um, just look at. Yeah, so mesh headings, for those in the audience who don't know, are kind of the more specific subject headings that um, PubMed uses. So um, that could be a whole topic, and I've actually been to a couple of webinars on it, and I still probably like would need to refresh myself before I thought a webinar on it. But saying that, here's PubMed. Um, an important thing about PubMed is also not to Google it. Go through our library so you're getting access to the stuff. But some of the stuff down here um, in this area can be really useful to play around with. The ones I use the most are clinical query, queries, which um, take you into more clinical stuff, which I like, and we can play around with that a little bit. But um, there is a MeSH database. I clicked on that. And you can search just MeSH headings which, again, are specific to PubMed and um, the, 
the National Health um, Institute, you know, they've come up with these. So um, if you're interested in kind of finding one catered towards your subject, this is where you can play around with it. Also, like I said, there are, like you said, there's tons of tutorials about it. Um, Scott, you're a faculty member, right? That's correct. Yeah. So, um, you, you know, it, it's really kind of meant for more in-depth research. If you're just kind of looking for articles, you know, more clinical articles or medical articles, PubMed is a good place to go versus sports discus. So you don't always have to worry about mesh headings. Um, but I think, you know, like you can type things in and kind of see what comes up. So um, sometimes I get asked a lot about our systematic reviews. That's actually not a mesh heading. That's a document type because really systematic reviews are, um, you know, they're literature reviews that are done by a team of people and they're done over years and, you know, they're looking at something. So there's not as many systematic reviews, but something like, I mean, you can see some of the stuff that popped up. I don't know. So, I think your suggestion of the clinical queries is a good place for me to play around too. I love clinical queries. So if you go here, um, they break it up into clinical study categories, systematic reviews, and then medical genetics. But you can search here, and you're just looking at clinical research areas. Um, so that can be really useful. Um, and then so like for this, we can play around with um, I mean, if you can really, well, that could be good for kinesiology. See, but then you can see here they divide it into these categories of the clinical studies, systematic reviews, medical genetics, you know, on these three tabs. But then notice here that they also give you categories of um, etiology, diagnosis, therapy, prognosis. So depending on what you're looking for, you know, if you're looking for more diagnosis versus the other stuff, you know that can help. Great. Um, notice yeah. also they have a broad and narrow. Sometimes the narrow can be good to play around with to see, you know, it cut it down to under 10,000. But see, I, I mean, obviously acute care. Another thing to keep in mind with PubMed that other people might not know in this session is that search connectors like and, or don't work the same way. They work more like Google with their algorithms. So you can just kind of put in acute care, you know, and, um, you know, different things. Do you have to capitalize at all when you use connectors like AND or OR? or not, not in PubMed. In the library catalog um, here, if you're playing around with, you know, kind of connecting to all of our databases, yes, you should capitalize the AND and the OR. With something like Sports Discus that we were in, see, because they give you the AND OR in between, you don't have to. Um, but if you're using it within the search box, um, you actually can. Um, you should. I usually do just to be safe. Does that answer your question? Yes. No, that's great information. I really appreciate it. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, it can be confusing. I mean, in the ideal world, they'd all get together and make a decision. <laughs> but the typical rule I stick by would be that if it's a library database, something through EBSCO, something like um, you know, ProQuest, those are the two big ones. But again, they have a lot of databases within those two fields. I capitalize the search connectors. PubMed, you don't have to do that. Actually, it just confuses the system. Again, I just always think of this like they work a little bit more like Google um, than, you know, uh, something like a library. They're not, they're not a library database. They're a national health database. So keep that in mind. And then um, also keep in mind that PubMed works very differently than a lot of databases. So we can have another webinar later just about PubMed. That would probably be a good idea. And then, um, again, Google, you don't have to use any of them. Google Scholar. So are there any other questions? I know we're bordering on the 30 minutes, so I don't want to keep you guys in an exciting library webinar of much, much past 630. Is it Amanda or Hannah, you guys have anything? You good? Was this helpful? <laughs> Yeah, it, it was. Thank you very much, uh, Sam. Yeah, and this is recorded, so um, it will be sent out too. And um, remember, like, I'll send out like the links to that. We have a video, a detailed video about ILL. We have a detailed video about how to use the catalog better, including the limiters in the catalog, which we didn't really have time to go over today. Um, I'm working on actually making one for sports discus, but it will be pretty similar to what we covered today that you guys saw 
Um, but note too, my big takeaway too would be what I always say is A, never pay for an article. <laughs> B, um, also don't um, uh, don't limit yourself to one database, um, especially at your level of research, all of you. Um, you should be able to look in um, multiple databases and also never be afraid to ask for help. Like if you feel like you've hit a wall with a literature review or, you know, even with your dissertation in terms of finding stuff, um, that would be a good time to, you know, we could do a WebEx session or a Google Hangout and just make sure you um, are hitting that stuff. And like I said, we do do, I have information on systematic reviews, PubMed, all that stuff, so just let me know if you have questions about that moving forward. But, okay, I know it's 6.31, so I'm guessing you guys have exciting things to do on a Monday night. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, guys. I'm going to cut it off. I'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye.